and welcome to Capital Talk, a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya. And now, more than ever, I'm Jeff Kananga. Now, if you've been watching Capital Talk all this week, you know it's been all about grooving. That's right. We're grooving all the way to the Groove Awards this coming Saturday at the KICC, celebrating the best and the brightest in gospel music. My guest, and I know you've seen a whole host of guests this week, from Giuliani to the Mwatia brothers, to Esther Wahome, to Emmy Koske, and even Jimmy Gate. My guest today, believe it or not, he's 40 years old. Doesn't look it, doesn't look a day over 20. Guess what? He's been in this business 20 years. Hasn't been recognized once. He says he's unashamed, unashamedly hasn't been given any prizes, any awards, anything. But it's okay with him because, he says, he's a full-time pastor. That's his job. He opened a church about six years ago. It's called the Waterbrook Church here in Hurlingham. Packs it every Sunday. He says Kenyans are not as sincere as they used to be. That's his beef today. We need to be more sincere, less of the bling, more of the sincerity. He knows what he's talking about because he was there when gospel was just a choir. He's reinvented it and helped a lot of young folks along the way. Let's waste no more time with the veteran at 40, Pete Odera. Hey, Jeff. My man. Good to see you Good again. Good to see you yeah. too. Welcome to the bench. Thank you so much. This is the bench. This is the bench. This is where it happens. Excellent. <laughs> Good to see you, Pete. And good to see you. 20 years in the business, right, Pete. Right. Like I was saying at the top, you don't look a day over 20. Well, the Lord's been good to me. <laughs> yeah, he's been good to me. And, and you are sincere about what you say. I mean, you are, you are really into the church, aren't you, Pete? Well, what it is, Jeff, um, I found that if we can impact lives, the lives of people, it doesn't matter what the music does. If you can impact lives, that's what's important. Yeah. Often what we have is, we, um, you know you have a glass and you put the juice in it. You, you don't celebrate the glass, you celebrate the juice. And that's what it is. The gospel music is about the juice. Uh, the music is the container. The message is the gospel. And if we take out the message, then we have a tasteless um, message. And I feel that, that that to me is what, what's important. Yeah, and, and you see a lot of that out there, don't you? Well, you see, when we started, <clears throat> it wasn't about, excuse me, it wasn't about, um, it wasn't about making money or making it getting fame because there was no money to be made back then. And you know, you know you, you'd come and watch uh, some of the shows yes. we had. Um, it, it wasn't about um, money. It wasn't about uh, fame. Uh, what it was about was downright we want to take the message to our generation and that was important mm. so for us i think that uh, now you find that because people can make money there's a lack of sincerity sometimes there's um uh, you know if you have a song out if you have a song out and everybody's dancing to it you know but i say you know what good is the dance uh if somebody's going to hell mm. pete let me play devil's advocate for a moment because the kinds of guests we've had this week is a reflection of young Kenya, a whole right, new generation. Right. The Daddy Owens, the Rough Tones, the um, uh, uh, Emi Koske, right. Esther Wahome, Jimmy right. Gate, Giuliani. And they have huge, huge following speed. Right. Are, you gonna, are you trying to tell me if their music is playing in a club or in a matatu, is that not a good thing? Because people are listening and they are mouthing the lyrics. Right. Listen. <clears throat> I have no problem with their music playing in the matatu, playing in the clubs, or whatever. I don't even have a problem with those individuals necessarily, personally. Um, but my thing is this, Jeff. What is playing? What is the depth in the music? What does it say? I was listening to, because I host a radio show now on, uh, on uh, Radio 316. And I play the music, so I'm listening also to the music and I'm saying, what is the music saying? Uh, if the music is saying, throw your hands up, and just wave them a little and dance for Jesus. I'm saying, okay, if that's playing in a club, what the people in the club, and I remember Fred Machoka asking us, why do you take your stuff to the clubs? Can't you sing in church? We said, listen, it's not those who are well who need a doctor. It's those who are sick. But if I'm going to see a sick person, I must take medicine to him. And if what I'm giving him is, he's dying, but I'm giving him Panadol, Nothing wrong with Panadol. Yeah. 
everything, if he has cancer, I can't give him Panadol. I must give him something strong that is going to help him be delivered from the pain and the, his body being eaten away by that cancer. And this is what I'm saying. Our music must be treatment for the ills in our society. Yeah. We must address the immorality. We must address corruption. We must address the lack of uh, moral rectitude and integrity in our society. And if our music is not doing that, then we're just being famous. Good point. Good point. I know a lot of people didn't think of that, but that's a really important point. But Pete, for you, it wasn't always like this. You started off secular. Uh, actually, the reality is I've always, everybody starts out secular. You know, nobody's born, born again. <laughs> but I always sang in church. I got born again uh, at eight years old. A uh, Scottish lady came and uh, I met her recently. Um, she's a great lady. Came as a missionary to Kenya, preached the gospel. I got born again. I was eight, maybe nine years old. I hit my teen years and Jeff, everything just went south. Hmm. I smoked it, I drank it, name it. I smoked it, I drank it, I did it. So there's nothing I haven't done. Under the sun. A few things I could name that maybe. <laughs> And, and, and uh, what happened is the people who I was in school with cannot believe the transfer. They say that you're a pastor these days. If you're a pastor, God can save anybody. <laughs> so then when I made a turnaround in my life, because yeah. um, what, it, what it was is, and you know I know how to be a hypocrite, because I was, I was singing worship music in church, but I was clubbing at night and singing in the morning. That's what was happening, Jeff. It's still happening today. There are many people who go and are singing in front but are clubbing or living a secret life. And it's, I mean, you can see it. You can see it. And so my thing is that uh, when I started out, uh, I, 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 didn't, I, I, I don't want to play with it anymore. I said, I'm going to go out for Jesus. I'm really going to put that in my music. I'm going to reach our generation and cause them to know that Jesus saves, that he transforms, that he can turn somebody's life around. Wow. You have never been celebrated in any of the awards. And I know it's not very important to you, but how come they nominated you after all this time, Pete? You know something, Jeff, I'm going to tell you something. My first nomination was for Lifetime Achievement. Uh, second nomination for Songwriter of the Year. <clears throat> and uh, here's what I say. The award that I have, Jeff, cannot be displayed on a shelf. The award that I have is the lives of the many people that I've touched. Somebody walked up to me one day and said, you know what, Pete, you came to my high school and you sang and I gave my life to Jesus as a result of your message. Because of you, I'm now living a productive Christian life. That's my award. And they're walking all around, all over the world, people who are in Australia, people who are in all over the world. That's my trophy, Jeff. And because this is what I say, Jeff. Um, you know, uh, last year when we went through this uh, whole issue when, you know, who was the greatest entertainer ever lived? Michael Jackson. Everybody says Michael Jackson. How did Michael Jackson die? He died a miserable, lonely man with all his awards. And if you stand before God, you'll never be able to say, you know what, Lord? I won eight Grammys. Can you believe it, Jesus? Eight Grammys. Yeah. And I had $600 million dollars in royalties in my bank account. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter because you can have eight Grammys, $600 million and be lonely and miserable and die and go to hell. Before the Lord, I don't think that those things are necessarily bad. I, and I think that, you know what, I will congratulate uh, whoever wins the awards on Saturday. I will congratulate them. But I will say this, is that what really matters, and I think because of the age that we live in, we need to have fun, but at the same time say to our young people, you know, when the music dies, I'm quoting Michael W. Smith, mm -hmm. and all is swept away, what really should remain is more than a song. We need to give the worship to Jesus Christ, and we need to tell the people in the world that you know there's a Savior who loves you, who can save you and deliver you from the stuff that you're going through. It reminds me of that line in the good book that says something like, what does it profit a man to inherit the world? Reading it this morning, Matthew 16, 20, uh, 26, that says, What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and but lose, lose his soul? It's true. It's so true, Pete. Yeah. What song have you been nominated for? Um, I'm Still Here. Ah. 
songwriter of the year, I'm still here. Yeah. The and song it, is and it goes something like? Joseph was a young man, loved his papa and his mama, worked hard to make his dad proud. Everything seemed to be working. Suddenly everything came down and turned around. His brothers didn't understand. Could have killed him and stilled him, but God had another plan. With time it would become clear through every single thing. There was a voice saying, I'm still here. Yes, I am. I'm still here. Here I am, I'm still here. Jesus is still here. Wow. And Pete is still here. Still here. 20 years later. Verse, verse 2 talks about my experience. Uh -huh. You know, now you may go through, you know, I've been through some trials, yes. gone through, but, but you know, there was a voice always saying, I'm still here. And I'm glad that I'm still here and that the Lord kept me. There was days I felt like giving up, Jeff. Um, days that I gave up and when I lifted up my hands and said I give up I found that God was holding up my hands he was the one who was carrying me through that storm Pete that's deep man that's that's deep for the bench <laughs> this is what everybody says <laughs> that's deep that's yeah. deep yeah. but I want people to know I want people to know that no matter what you're going through God can carry you whether you're a politician whether you're a street sweeper whether you're a, a, a watchman whether you're a, a waiter uh, whether you're a television anchor, uh, executive producer, big guy, um, God wants to be relevant in K24. God wants to be relevant in the bank. God wants to be relevant where you are, and He wants to be where you are. And that's the thing, and many of us have made religion or God this abstract thing, but He isn't. Mm. He isn't. Yeah. 20 years later, Pete, are you in a good place now? and where you are now, looking across this nation. And you know, we are, we're at a crossroads right now. We are. Can we turn this around? We can. We keep saying we have a great nation, but we are our own worst enemies. Right. Can we turn it around? Um, my dad just did a book. And, uh, and uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm allowed to say yes, this. You this are. is K24. Go for it. My dad was uh, Jaramogi's speechwriter. And so um, he's known, we've known uh, the Prime Minister's father and the family and a lot of the politicians who are always around us during the days of the one-party rule, policemen coming to the house and we had to dodge and have clandestine meetings with men. I was there mm. and seeing all this happen. He's just written a book. What's uh, it called? My Life with Jaramogi, A Close Confidence Memoirs. And it'll be out real soon. Mm. I was actually just reading the... <clears throat> I realized that it's the same script, different players. 45 years later, yeah. same script, different players. Nothing has changed because some of the main issues are not being addressed. So I, I feel that my role is, is, isn't just here as a spiritual leader, as it were, as a musician, but also to help us to see that there is a connection and a continuity, that our generation has to become relevant in whatever process we are involved in. Um, that we have to hold, and I, I, that's why I'm saying that there's a sense of insincerity. The people who led the struggle for democracy in the 80s and 90s, the people who spoke the loudest and most vociferously against the injustice of previous regimes was the church. And when the church speaks now, because they're not sounding like people want them to hear, they're being called a bad guy. I think we're being insincere. We need to look carefully at what they're saying. Now, is it true that uh, several and many of the pastors let us down? I think so, but anybody, you know, we were watching a movie the other day called The Preacher's Kid. Everybody makes mistakes. And if we are not willing to say, you know what, you made a mistake, but you lived up to it. You said, you know what, I made a mistake and I'm asking for forgiveness. Everybody needs grace. And unfortunately, sometimes we, we undo our grace. And I feel that, um, I feel that the, the, the church is being wrongly vilified at this moment uh, because it could be that we are saying something that's important, mm. uh, that we need to think really hard about the future. So we've been waiting for 20 years for a constitution. So another six months will do what? Uh, nothing. Jeff, my, my principle is this. 
If we can't obey simple traffic rules, how in the world are we going to deal with the constitution? Traffic rules. Yeah. Red Keep lights. left. Yeah. Or red Stop lights. at the red light. Mm. I've been in the traffic, I've stopped at the red light, and I have guys hooting behind me. And I said, what is wrong with you? Yeah. It's a red light up there. And this is the problem. If we can't obey, we're impatient to disobey basic traffic rules. What is going to happen when we are uh, dealing with life-changing issues, such as the ones that are in the uh, constitutional draft? How will we deal with the kind of impunity? We still have two years later people in uh, internally displaced uh, camps. We're not sincere, Jeff. And I feel that if we will be sincere in dealing with the real ills of our society, the constitution will not fix your heart, Jeff. It can't. My goodness. You gotta come back on the bench, man. I gotta come back on the bench? This stuff needs to be hammered to Kenyans over and over again. Thank you, Jeff. Well done, man. Yeah. Well done. Good to see you again, Pete. And good to see you, Jeff. Well done. I need to host you on my show. <laughs> I'll, I'll come on. <laughs> Waterbrook, yes? Yes. At Hurlingham. Make a date. Pete O'Dera is talking from the heart. He says we are not being sincere. And you know what? Think about it. What he says, think about it. We just put it out here on the bench for you to sim simply think about and determine yourselves. We're a great nation. Can we wait another six months? We've waited 20. Has anything changed in 45? Pete is questioning, and that's what we need, people to keep questioning. Wow! And he's nominated. Call up. Make this guy. Give him an award. Give him something. <laughs> Although his awards can be put on a shelf, give him something. Pete has come a long way, and he's still striving. What a guest. Wow. Up next, Kanji Mbogwa. He's one of the hosts of the Groove Awards that are on this coming weekend. Sit back, sit tight. Capital Talk will be back in a moment. And welcome back to Capital Talk. I told you. The bench would not be the same if this man was not on the bench this week. Everyone was telling me, you gotta bring Kanji, you gotta bring Kanji. <laughs> Why? I tell you, man, 1997, they were in America studying. He was studying music. They formed this band, Milele, you know the deal. Came back home, has been a part of Mavuno Church. In fact, he's a chief worship leader. He's there every Sunday doing his thing. There's a whole generation of people like Kanji playing their part for the future of this nation. And he's one of the hosts, along with Armani, this weekend at the Groove Awards, that's right, which begin at 1 p.m. at the KICC. So, book a seat. Kanji will be lighting up the house. <laughs> What's up, My man? brother. Good, good to see you, man. Good to see you too, man. Huh? You have a history, man. I mean, not just uh, uh, history inter interlinked with this country because your dad was a journalist and he was detained and you know yeah. it, it, that whole thing yeah yeah did that influence you to be who you are today i mean definitely man my uh i mean it's something that i am very vocal about uh, in terms of the impact my dad has had um, on my career and um he i'm one of the very fortunate individuals who had parents who you know are like you know if you're gonna be a ditch digger make sure you're the best you know <laughs> so if you want to yeah. be a musician yeah you know, be it, you know, and make sure you're the best in it, you know. Um, so from an early age, I was just encouraged to do the things that I loved doing, the things I was passionate about. Yeah. And, um, and you know, even going to school to study music. I mean, at that time, no one was studying music. Correct. Uh, I mean, you could count on your hands the people who were going to study music, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, he was like, hey, dude, if this is what you want to do, then you have to be the best, so go and study it, you and know. And there's no regrets, are they? No, absolutely not, man. Like, um, it's, uh, you know, to everyone, his own, huh? Mm. And, and, and I, th I think for me, music and entertainment and the arts, yeah. media, that's, that's my thing. Yeah. yeah. And with Milele, how, first of all, how did you form Milele? Well, Milele, it's actually a really cool story, man, because um, we started out, um, we knew each other as children growing up. Huh? And um, um, I'm the youngest in the group, but um, we used to do this thing at um, the Brackenhurst uh, Retreat Center yeah. every, uh, every Easter, where we had a bunch of families, like 100 families, would come together and do Easter weekend. And um, so their families were part of that. And so we kind of knew each other. Um, and then we didn't see each other for, you know, 10, 12 years uh, when we were in high school and school and whatnot. And but one day in the US, we go to this Kenyan church. I go to this Kenyan church 
And lo and behold, uh, three people who I kind of know from my past and I didn't know anyone else. Yeah. Um, so we kind of just hit it off at that you know, one meeting and started hanging out, playing basketball, whatnot. And um, at some point we said, okay, guys, we can't just be playing basketball all the time. Is there something we can be doing together to kind of keep growing our relationship? Yeah. So um, we said, um, I was studying music. Kaima was a, 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 a composition major, music composition major at the same school as I was. Um, Christian was studying theology and Moora was studying business. And so we said, two, music out of four, I think we're going to do music, you know. Yeah. So, so we started out, we didn't have any vision really to become musicians as a group or anything like that. But um, God had a different plan, man. Yes. And um, yes. so now it's, you know, this year we're celebrating our 12th year. Um, and and um, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. What was the big hit? Sanjo Lama. And that was a big song. And it goes something like? <laughs> okay, it was, it was a Lingala song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it still is, I guess. Um, yeah. Sanjola Maya Wenanga, Sanjola Ma. Kumisa Maya Wenanga, Kumisa Ma. Ya Wena Boboto, Ya We Sanjola Ma. Etc., etc., etc. You know what I noticed about you, Kanji, and people like Pete and Esther, and everybody who's been on the bench this week, you yeah. guys are passionate, man. Yeah, you yeah, sing man. from deep down here. Yeah, for sure. I man. can feel it, man. The bench is, you know, reverberating. <laughs> Huh? It's tingling. You it's the it. Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, yeah. you know, you are where you are for a reason. Do, do you wake up saying that all the time? Um, definitely. I mean, uh, Jeff, you know, my, my convictions about uh, this continent and about uh, uh, this generation of young creative people is that, um, you know, we are the people who are going to transform this continent, you know, um, and that God has given Africa every single resource needed to to be a, a world changing continent you know and and um, so my conviction is that this is something that god has given us and each one has been given something to add to the whole mix yes, you know yes. um you know you've been given journalism i've been given music someone else has been given medicine someone else business and and if we all play our part um trusting that god is going to do something then we're going to see this continent um, um changed you know um, and uh, for, for me, that's, that's, that's my missional assignment, you know. It's what I'm saying, that's what I'm here to, to see happen. Um, is the original Africa that God intended um, coming to pass, coming, uh, coming to be seen. And we can make that happen, can't we? We can. Yes. Yeah. Kanji, I know you've been involved very, very passionately with the Groove Awards the last several years. Yeah. Very passionately. What does it mean to you? What does it mean for, let's say, these young artists being nominated, winning, getting that acclaim, getting that recognition? What does it mean? Because you're there. You're, you're on the ground. Dude, let me, let me just even say, man, because um, I, I have one of the special distinctions of um, having witnessed uh, kind of like the, the changing of God in the industry. Because, mm. um, uh, you know, I interacted with, you know, with the rap communities, with, with Pete, um, with Jack Odongo, yes. and those those amazing, uh, uh, I guess, the, they were the founders of the, of this industry. Yeah. So I interacted with that group of people, and went for their shows and sang with them. But then at the same time, uh, I was able to also be at the beginning of this kind of new move. Um, I mean, right now we're getting a lot of media attention, um, but but tr truth be told, it's been a ten-year process, you know, yeah. um, of 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 you know, gospel musicians saying, okay, fine, since we don't have, you know, the whole of the country, let's just go deep, you know, let's, let's work on our performance, let's work on our singing, let's work on our depth in terms of our content and stuff like that. And um, so what we see today is really a culmination of those 10 years. Eh? Um, but I've walked those 10 years, man. I've actually seen each of those 10 years um, them happen, you know. Uh, so for me, it's, it's when I see Groove Awards and where it is and, you know, where gospel music has, has gotten to, um, dude, it's a, it's a tear jerker, man. No doubt. Uh, yeah, no doubt. yeah, it is. And the next 10 years, yeah, Kanji, yeah. are they looking good? Because, you know, I was telling Pete earlier on, we're at a crossroads at a, as a nation. Yeah. We're, at a, we're at a crossroads, whether it's religion, politics, you, you name it. Yeah. We're at a crossroads. Yeah. The next 10 years, and you guys will have been our age then. Yeah. How's it looking? Well, I think it's looking good, man. Um, I think we have some solid people in the industry. I think uh, it's, it's always based on, on the people that you have, you know. And uh, people who have, uh, you know, a, a long-term uh, vision, you know, uh, to see, 
this gospel industry now moved to a place where now we are impacting the entire continent, you know. Um, so uh, I, think, I think the 10 years are going to be beautiful, man. Um, I can't wait to see. Um, you know, I've seen myself taking, the moving from a very active role to now more of a mentorship and cheering guys on and seeing guys do amazing things. Um, and, and I hope that other artists will be able to make that transition so that it's not, it's not um, like, you know, we're always feeding down the line, man. We're always feeding down the line and bringing other people up. Huh? Yeah. Um, and, That's and, important. Yeah, and if that happens, I think the 10, 10, ten years, is, 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 it's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be amazing. Have you seen Mavuno grow in that time as well? Because I hear you know, a bit of criticism, just like I guess in every church, yeah, that, yeah. you know, too much disco, too much laid backness. Yeah. But it works, doesn't it? Man, it, it works because um, th isn't that how we are as, as a culture? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and our conviction at Mavuno is just simply that, is basically saying Christianity doesn't have a culture. It doesn't. Christianity always borrows from the existing culture and says, how do we package God's, the, the same truths of God, but in a way that's relevant to this culture? Um, from the beginning of Christianity, um, I, I, I was, um, you know, just doing a little research about, uh, you know, uh, ancient Rome and, and um, how um, before people started, you know, saying praise, praise be to Jesus yeah. and stuff like that, the actually greeting of the day was praise be to Caesar, mm. you know? So the things that we think were very unique to Christianity were actually just Christianity trying to um, uh, infiltrate culture and use culture as a, as, a, as a platform for reaching people, you know. So it's the same thing that Mavuno is doing now. You know, we're just saying um, we're laid back. We spend our music uh, time listening. Maybe it's in the concerts. Maybe it's in the club. Uh, and, and so we need to be able to take that expression and package God's truths into it, and 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 um, that's what that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's n it's nothing new, bro. <laughs> as as much as it looks new. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Those of you watching right now, Kanji, hopefully millions of people watching. Yeah. And they want to come to the awards on Saturday. Yeah. What do you what do you have in stock? What was what's going to be? Oh man, mm -hmm. let me tell you, this is going to be a show like no other. <laughs> it's going to be a show like no other, yeah. man. If you haven't bought your ticket, get it now, mm -hmm. um, because um, it's it's uh, what we're doing is. I'll give a sneak preview. I'm not, I don't even know if I'm allowed to do this, yeah. but I'll give a sneak preview. We are basically looking at the growth of the music, of the gospel music industry, yeah? um, from the 80s when it's kind of started now bubbling, mm. you know, uh, onto the surface, you know. And we're going to just take a look at the artists, the music, um, how, you know, gospel music has started defining culture and things like that. But we're going to take a journey down memory lane, ending up to, you know, 2010, where now you have all these huge... Echo Didas and Giuliani's and all these artists who are just like blowing up crazy, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so we're going to do that, not just visually, but also musically. Wow. Um, so it's, it's going to be, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the mamas don't have anything on us, bro. <laughs> there, I said it. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to be right alongside Armani. Uh, yeah, and Armani and yeah. I are, yeah. are, are going to be hosting the show. Yes. And uh, I mean, Armani is a trip. We, I mean, we've had so much fun scripting the show and nice, stuff like that. Nice. So, so we're just going to come out and, and, and have fun, yes. you know. This yeah. country has come a long way, hasn't it, Kanji? It has, bro. You know, yeah. we've come a long way. And as much as we like to beat ourselves down yeah. and, 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 you know, we are our own worst enemies at, at most of the time. Yeah. But there are some positive aspects, aren't there? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, for me, in fact, um, I'll tell you something. Two years, three years ago, we did a U.S. tour. And we called it TIA. This yeah. is Africa. Yeah. And you know, obviously, the This is Africa from the Blood Diamond yes. movie and yes. whatnot. Yes. And they say, you know, Africa is jacked up. You know, poverty, HIV and AIDS, war. war you yeah. know, yeah. that's the story of Africa. Yeah. Um, but we said, you know, there's another story to every, there's another side to every story told, you know. And the story of Africa is about young people like Jeff Konange. Hello. <laughs> um, who are saying, you know, they're saying no. You know, they're saying, Africa is a great continent. It's a continent of beauty. It's a continent of courage. Uh, it's a continent of perseverance. Because, dude, to go through the stuff we've gone through... Hey. We're, we're, and still come out And still come strong. out shining. Hello. You know, so, so we're a continent of perseverance. Yes. And, and so we, there are all these beautiful things about this continent and uh, also about this country. And, and uh, I think for me, it's, it's, it's just a matter of us being able to, not just as the gospel music industry or as the music industry, but just people of art and media. Yeah. 
uh, we need to be able to tell this story to the rest of the world. You know that that this don't don't play with Africa, man. Mm. This is Africa. We're coming out. We're coming out. Guns blazing. Guns blazing. <laughs> Kanji, congrats, yep. man. Thank you. Thank you. Well bro. done. Thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Yeah, uh, we're gonna see you there, man. You know it. Yeah. Won't miss it for the world. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Well done. God bless. Kanji Bogwa, my goodness. You know when we talk about the future of Kenya, it's Kanji, Peter Dera. That generation, many others, everyone you've seen on the bench this week are playing their part mm -hmm. for the future of this nation. Wow, this is the place to be. Just like the bench is the place to be. Because right. you, you cannot find these kinds of guests anywhere else. But right here on the bench. And if you are internet access, www.k24.co.ke was streaming live. And some more good news. K24 will now, from this coming Monday, be on DSTV. That's right. That's what's up, man. Channel 413. One? 413. 413. Yeah, right you next best, to Al Jazeera, CNN, you know, yeah, right there. That's right, that's right. We're smoking. We got <laughs> hot. it. Hot. We're hot. <laughs> and Kanji's hot. <laughs> and Kanji's on the bench on the award-winning station, K24, where we are, as always, even in times of gospel, all Kenyan. All the time. Wait for it. <laughs> Because you know we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Oh. The time. <laughs> Capital Talk is recorded at the Fairview Hotel. The country hotel in town.